Hello Internet, this is Ben with the Mysterious Space Update. Uh, I kind of wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes. I, I remember, you know, really early on people expressed interest in the code, and I've done a couple kind of code related videos in the past. Um, although one I did was just like absurdly long and probably really boring. So I want to try and do something quicker um, and, and show off some of the code behind the last update video that I posted where you can actually see the gameplay. So if like the code stuff doesn't interest you, you should watch that video. And if the code stuff does interest you, well then you should continue watching this video. Um, so I, I'm not like prepared for this at all. I just decided to do this honestly two minutes ago, less than that. So let's see where to start. Where to start? Probably, I think, I, I'd kind of been thinking about this during work, and I thought I would show you how some of the collision uh, code works for for everything, but particu particularly for the debris that you encounter in the, um, uh, well, what does she call it, folded space or something. I've been calling it pocket pocket dimensions, or, or where is that? I'm trying to find the code over here. That no, that was apparently I make a noise and I drag a window for you. Um, let me see if I can find that uh, universe level. It's space, yeah, pocket dimension. So these are the the crazy um, pocket dimensions that that you I, I don't know what she calls them, folded space uh, that you encounter when you when you open those obelisks. And you can see we set a bunch of funny business like the width. Um, the width is in tiles, and so actually I realize this code's real bad, I'm going to fix that. Um, what we, we need is divide by 32 at the end. There we go, problem solved. Um, so this is like the, the width of the level in tiles. There are no tiles, but all levels specify their width in tiles, and you can get it later as a pixel width. And that's, that's calculated from um, the width times 32. So anyway, uh, and that 32 should be constant, but shh, never you mind. Don't no, it doesn't, that's not a problem. Um, so we set the width and the height of the level, and some of it we do based on, these are the dimensions of, this, of the screen, which is a little funny. Um, if you could hack the game and change the dimensions of the screen, you could change some of the mechanics behind the game, which is a little weird. I, th these are things that if I was doing things perfectly, I, but I'm like, you know what? I mean, it, I usually do it when I want some sort of visual effect. Um, in the game, and, and in this case, I want you to be able to scroll up and down the screen just a little bit as you move ar around. And so I was like, well, then that should be based on the height of the screen. That is what I'm, I'm basing it on. But in reality, if I do allow the, the the game or the player to be able to change the dimension of the screen in the future, I'm going to have to change logic like this because this is going to make the space larger while not increasing the number of objects you know that you can collide with. So you're essentially making the game easier. So there's funny things like that kind of going on, you know, that you might not think of. Um, and, it, you know, again, it really depends. And this was really a case where it was. It was like, it, it is based on the size of the screen. That is conceptually what I want. The feeling of the game is based on the size of the screen, so it's based on the size of the screen. Whereas other things I try to base on, you know, time taken or, you know, whatever. Other things that are constant. Um, and, and that's when I would, would use fixed numbers rather than the dimensions of the screen. But other things involve uh, enemies spawning. So enemies always... Uh, purposely spawn just off screen because I want them to be as close but not where you would see them poof appear which I think is still a bug that happens in multiplayer if, if the two players screens kind of overlap you know what they're seeing in funny ways it might spawn an enemy off screen for player two but that puts it on screen for player one so and I know how to fix that I just haven't done it yet and that's not going to get fixed for this next release but anyway so there's some other places where again you you would make the game easier by giving yourself more more room if the, if the screens were bigger, right? So there's all sorts of funny stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, I didn't even mean to talk about that. So um, there's also some little little business. I, I tried upping the number of stars because I thought maybe uh, Pocket Dimension should be crazy and have more stars. But I was like, man, that's kind of real distracting. Uh, but then that made me realize, oh, I should make there be more stars the deeper in you go because more distracting means more hard. So there you go. The, the Pocket Dimensions become harder in subtler ways uh, as you progress. And there's a bunch of stuff about creating little fuel shards, creating some crates. Again, depending on uh, effective depth is is basically the... I, I call it depth because, again, of roguelikes. You know, what is your depth in the dungeon? Well, in this case, it's what is... How far are you into the sector? I call it effective depth because on your way back, um, the the... 
you know, you're not going backwards in difficulty level. The difficulty still needs to ramp up as you go backwards. And so effective depth keeps track of that um, based on whether or not you have the information. That's if you've gone and investigated the mysterious source, then we, you know, calculate effective depth, depth slightly differently. But anyway, so that's another thing here. So more, and, you know, we saw that here as well more stars, the harder, you know, the level you're at, you're at and, and here again. So, and it's not just, you know, the, the depth doesn't necessarily increase 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, in sequential order, because you can take different routes through the system if you remember the map, and maybe I'll just open up the game, um, and I can kind of point out some of them to you with my mouse. The mouse does not show up uh, on video capture when I have the game open, but I'm sure we can get it close enough. So, uh, this upper bit up here in particular, you end up repeating a bunch of difficulty levels, and that's because it's a, it's a longer path. So, you know, you, you go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, or something like that. Uh, and there are some paths that are shorter, and so you go, you jump up through difficulty faster, and then of course there are hidden paths that you cannot see here if you find the extra bonus fuel, and, and those might be faster or longer as well. And so sometimes you can jump up in difficulty, like you might jump from 7 to 9 or something, I think, or sorry, like 7 to 10. Uh, where you skip two instead of just one. So there's some potentially significant jumps, uh, which will let you beat the game faster, but you know, you're know you now you're fighting hard enemies that you maybe don't have the best equipment for. So um, anyway, so effective depth, yeah, depth is a kind of weird thing in the game. Um, and it's not really, no, that's a lie. It is told to you. It's told to you, but you don't know it. Uh, here where it says uh, ZZ Omega Zero, you can see on the lower left there, zero is the depth of the level. Uh, one, it, it's the right, it starts from zero and goes to nine, whatever, n computers. I probably should just, for display purposes, increment all the numbers by one, but that is the depth of the sector. Uh, the trick, though, is when you go in reverse, it's not going to update that. That's like the name of the, of the planet or something. Um, so the numbers remain constant on your way back. Uh, but that is the kind of the, the I don't know what you want to call that, the, the real depth, I guess, right? Not the effective depth, but that is the actual depth. I don't know, you know right? You can see where this gets a little confusing. Um, but effective depth is what I use for almost everything. I never really refer to the, uh, again, whatever you want to call it, real depth. Anyway, we then also put in a bunch of debris based on the width of the of the map. And this is what I was saying. If you make the map taller, it doesn't take that into account to create more debris. And like, yeah, I could, you know, I guess I could do something about that. I could do this, you know, times uh, pixel height and take a square, you know, somewhere there would be a square root in here and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it because, again, I'm not thinking that the uh, dimensions of the display are going to change, so that's not a big concern. But let us talk about the debris, which is what I meant to talk about. But I'm, you know, to someone, I know this stuff is interesting. To other people, maybe not. Uh, the thought process, I don't know, it's its a thing that when I look at games, I wish I knew the, the thought process of the designers. Because these are the sorts of things that could lead to funny bugs in the, in the future. You know, maybe, like when you emulate games in, in the distant future, you know, we no longer have uh, Nintendos. And if you've ever tried to emulate a Nintendo game, here's a funny example of something that happens. On the classic Nintendo, on the very, very right of the TV, there was this weird effect where... I think it was called Overdraw or something like that, but the tiles were drawn in a funny way. And you can see it if you play like a, an actual Nintendo game on an actual TV. And I think it even needs to be a CRT? That's probably not true. I bet, I don't know. I don't know enough about the technology to say. But anyway, you can see some bizarre effects as you scroll from left to right or right to left. The tiles on the very right edge kind of do a funny like half-drawn thing. And it looks it looks kind of ugly, but some games have like taken this into account. And so, and so they're, they, they code around that, you know. But then emulators don't have that problem, um, and so the games that are compensating now do something even weirder. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so sometimes weird things happen in games, and you might look at that and go like, why would they code it that way, right? That seems dumb. Um, and who knows what sort of circumstances might arise. Again, maybe someone... A mysterious space is not nearly popular enough for this to happen, but maybe someone would later decide that they want to mod the game to allow for a larger screen dimension. And the game will mostly work that with that. Um, a lot of things are coded to position themselves on the left or right edge of the screen, you know, no matter what the size is. Not everything, though, I bet. You'd probably have some uh, weird issues. But then you would have other funny side effects like these sorts of things where now the sectors are easier and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you can see where you might look at that and go like, why did, the, why did they code it that way, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. I, I know I've seen things like that in modern games without 
you know, even just mods, just looking at weird things that happen, and, and you look at that and go, how can that possibly, how can that happen, <laughs> you know, how, how is it possible? Um, and so I'm, I hope that this gives a sort of insight for those sorts of things uh, for Mysterious Space. Um, you know, I don't know that this is necessarily, again, such a case. You're not going to see this unless, uh, you, you know, you, you modded the game to allow for high resolutions, but I'm sure there are other funny things that we'll touch upon uh, that maybe you might see and think, why was it coded that way? So there you go. Now you know a little, <laughs> a little more. I don't know. What am I rambling about? Let's talk about collision. So let me open up all the debris. Here's one. We can start with this one, although this one is a little less interesting. Um, let's see. De oh, it's uh, under, en whoops, enemies, debris. Yeah, so I've got all these debris, and you can see these funny orange masks. Let's go ahead and, and take, take a look at this one. So this is one of the big pieces of debris. Um, sorry, and I need to pay attention to the capture window size. I've left it small. I probably should not have. Let me, uh, let me see if I can size this uh, so we can fit all the pertinent details. Um, make the window a little, a little shorter. Hello, where's your edge? Here we go. A little shorter. All right. Um, so this is one of the pieces of debris, right? Um, and I think I've shown this off in a previous update, but and this is something I should do with pixel shaders, and I have for another game. I was making this game called A Little Wilderness, which was kind of, uh, you know, like any of those sort of survival sim games uh, plus uh, Oregon Trail. But anyway, and that was my first experience with Mono Game, and, and it helped me learn a lot for sure. Um, and I ended up abandoning it for no particular reason. I'm sure I just got distracted with something. Anyway, so I have these two sprites, like a white version for when it takes damage, and a colored version, and I do this for all the enemies as well. And again, as I mentioned, pixel shaders, you can accomplish this without having two sprites. I just happened to get lazy in the early development of Mysterious Space and, and never implemented the pixel shaders. It's kind of a pain in the ass with Mono Game to set up the pixel shaders, to be honest. Um, it was a little easier, I guess, in the days of XNA, but those days are no more, so... Um, anyway, so so that's why we have these two. Uh, but here's the graphic, and you might wonder what these are, the colored blocks, or maybe you don't. Hey, because we were talking about collision, right? So these are the collision rectangles, where you actually hit uh, these individual guys. And you can do pixel-perfect collision. There's libraries to do that. It's needless, <laughs> especially when things are moving around as quickly as they are in the game, and especially as quickly as they are in the... Uh, folded space or pocket dimensions or whatever you want to call them. Um, there's no need to, for that kind of perfection. So so here are the rectangles that kind of vaguely define the shape, and you can see it's, it's accurate enough. Like, the chances that you hit this little tiny area in the lower left and notice, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, and if you happen to dodge this, you'll be happy. Like, oh man, I, I totally thought I'd dodge that, but I guess I didn't. And then you're happy. So I try to err on the side of leaving little edges, I think I've kind of actually got it sort of 50-50, you know, for this edge that isn't captured, this edge is. That's I should probably honestly try to, again, err more on the side of, of being friendly to the player, but this is a minor thing. And again, this all happens so fast, it's so hard to tell. So these um, rectangles, though, mean nothing in the game. When I export the image, I don't, I don't include them. I export like this, we have the transparent background. Um, and this, by the way, is Fireworks, in case anyone is wondering what I use. Um, I happened to learn Fireworks back in like high school, late high school. Uh, it was owned by Macromedia at the time, and I've, I don't know, I've just stuck with it since. Yeah, what version is this even? I'm on some old version. I used to use, like for years and years and years, I was using 2004 for just like ever. It was some copy I got from high school or something. Or no, that couldn't have been high school. I guess that was college. Um, but I don't even know what version this is. Does it say? I don't want to open their help. I just wanted like about. There we go, about. CS5, right? So anyway, it's a good program. Um, I happen to like it. It's mainly for doing vector work, and the graphics in Mysterious Space are mainly not vectors, so it's kind of not the right tool for the job. Um, but that being said, I have used it. Let me see. So like for this one, I drew this by using the uh, polygon tool. Where's the triangle? So I drew like, like some triangles, uh, and yeah, actually here I can make them perfect. You know, gave them a border, said, oh, I want two pixels wide, oh, it should be hard. There's this uh, pixel, sorry, I realize you can't see some of those things that were going off on the on the bottom of the screen there, but um, you can choose, gosh, I wish I could, <laughs> the uh, capture window is like high enough up that I can't pull the, the window up, this is poorly planned. Anyway, there you go. So uh, you can set 
you can set all kinds of properties. You can say, oh, I just want a blue border. Oh, I want a black border. And it's never fixed. You know, later on you go and you're like, okay, I'm making circles. Oh, wait, no, I decided I want to change this triangle. Oh, I decided I want to rearrange the points, right? And this is the power of a, of a vector editing program. Oh, I decided I want to be filled with red instead of nothing or blue or whatever. So I drew these triangles, again, using its helpful polygon tool arranged them together, and then said flatten to a bitmap, because you can just do that, and then went ahead and did the detailing, you know, take out, let's get rid of uh, the mask here, oops, and I left this polygon, you know, and took out some little pixels to make it look damaged, and did some little, you know, random-ish shading again to make it look a little damaged, uh, and then blew the whole thing up 200%, just to make it look nice and chunky and pixely, which again is effect, an effect I can probably do within mono game. I'm pre-doubling all my image sizes. <laughs> There's going to be people out there who are like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Why would he do this? Uh, but there it is. Um, yeah, so there's the. that's how I, I make these. So I, I am using the vectors, right, was the point of all that. But so let's talk about, again, these. These are just for help, for helping me. And what I do, and I'm making sure to do it on the upper left, uh, Fireworks gives me the coordinates. So it says this is the coordinate 18 over 2 down, 18 over 10 down, or sorry, 18 pixels wide, 10 pixels high. And so in the game, and let's show you some examples where this is not true. Um, where is, I think it's just like, uh, let's see, player, creature, thing, collision, rectangles, yeah, that's what we want. Is overlapping, right? So here's the code, so we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, so every every object, and sorry, let's center this so you can see the name of the file. So we're on the thing class, and the thing class is, is the base for everything that appears on the screen. Uh, that, that's like moving around and stuff, not terrain, uh, but crates and pickups and enemies and bullets, all of those things are derived from the thing class. And there's this little method here that builds a little collision rectangle. And the collision rectangle is, you know, for determining collision, and it's always rectangles. And you can see it's a list, but we only ever add one item. And it's, it, you know, starts in the upper left and goes for the width and the height of the whole shape. So it's the whole thing. And I do everything from the upper left. I am, you know, I learned how to code first on Apple IIe's, actually, back in elementary school. Um, and, you know, worked in DOS and everything since. And you always, always, always went from the upper left. The upper left was zero, zero, and then the numbers got bigger as you went to the right and down. Modern engines, because lots of stuff is based on 3D, you start from the bottom and go up, which is how a real graph, and because, <laughs> this is a funny story actually, I all, graphs always confused me in elementary school because I learned how to program and I loved programming and I did it on my own time, I learned like quick basic and everything. When we got to doing graphs in school, I always was second guessing myself on XY coordinates because when you when you programmed in, in those days, always the y coordinate became negative as you went up. But on a graph, of course, you go positive. And again, with modern 3D libraries, you always go positive. And because that is the standard of math and now 3D libraries, that's also the standard for a lot of 2D engines. But I just still always think in this mode. Um, and thankfully, there's an option in mono game to switch it this way. So I've just refused to change, basically. I'm just being in uh, I don't know what you want to call that. I'm, I'm being an old man or something and uh, refusing to change my ways uh, and, and doing from the upper left to zero, zero. So anyway, and you know what? And so there you go. There's another story of why things are coded the way they are in Mysterious Space. Someday someone will be modding this. That's probably not even true. Mysterious Space is not that popular. <laughs> but, but they'll be coding this and be like, wait, what? He's doing it from the upper left? Isn't he using mono game? Why did he change this option? And <laughs> now you know why. Uh, what th This is a record for the future. Um, <laughs> so anyway, there's building a basic collision rectangle. For player ship, um, let's see the collision, actually, so that's not going to work. Let me slide this over again, just so you can see kind of the structure here. So we want things, creatures, players, player ships, here's like the light Lukita, or however you say it. And that is going to build, no, it's the very same, but a little different. I think some of these are not perfect squares, and I was hoping to, to show that off. No, they're all squares, they're just smaller squares. And I purposely made the um, collision rectangles of the players... Right, this guy's got the full one because he's a big chunky ship. I purposely made them just a touch smaller for the most part. Uh, again, except for this guy because it is such a square, you know, obviously square ship. But again, to be friendly to the player. And this is a lesson I learned from some tiling, uh, tiling engine 
article that I read online, they were talking about the classic Mega Man games. If you look at uh, like Mega Man X, actually, it's not not that classic, but classic enough, right? Super Nintendo is pretty classic. Um, the collision rectangles are purposely smaller than you know. They don't include his feet. They don't include the top of his head and all this other stuff. And the reason is that you would rather the player feel like they dodged a bullet than be hit unfairly. Uh, so I, I took I tried to take that lesson to heart. Um, and so you know I talked about that just a little bit for those uh, big big chunky guys. Uh, the debris that you find in pocket space. And and uh, correspondingly you want to kind of err on the side of being a little too big for enemies because you would like the player to n never feel like their bullet should have hit but didn't because it you know clipped through a few pixels you know it would be much better if it just hit a little edge of white space that you know maybe technically it shouldn't have but the player is not going to complain about that they probably won't even notice so I, I've tried to, to um, take those things into consideration and you know for the collision rectangles here these are things that you can shoot uh, but for the most part, shooting them is useless. So I was happy to, you know, leave little pixels off on the side. Um, you know, again, you might say that I should make these a little bigger so that the bullets definitely hit them, and the player is already a little smaller, so they will dodge more. You know, blah blah blah. That'll work itself out. Uh, but I decided to be extra friendly here, I guess, and just make these smaller. Also, because of the way that you're approaching these things, you might think, man, he, he, this is a big area to not have a rectangle on, right? You're always coming though, left to right. And it's moving real fast. There's no way you're going to, like, as a player, zip around and hit the back of these things. It's just not going to happen. So I saved, the, you know, I just saved myself the trouble and, and didn't worry about those back edges. That said, I probably worried about it in more cases than I needed to. Um, like here, I probably did not need this rectangle. You're never going to hit that. <laughs> but, but it's there anyway. Oops. I, that's because um, that was the export view. Uh, which again you can't see I was on that tab because uh, Windows. Next time I record this I'm clearly going to have to remember to do a bigger capture area. This is the capture area I use for recording actual mysterious space videos I guess you'd call them. But Anyway let's get so now that you've you know I've shown this a billion times I just keep getting distracted. Um, here is right these funny collision rectangles again these are not understood by the game these are just to help me and I started to talk about coordinates and everything so let's find finally the debris and you can see the horrible way in which I've coded this and I will probably refactor this at some point in the future it is not uncommon for me to go back through the code and be like oh right I need to clean that up oh right I need to clean that up on the other hand I'm sure there are things that I have not cleaned up and that'll be embarrassing to me later uh, <laughs> so let's show you such an embarrassment that will hopefully be fixed at a future time and sorry I'm scrolling over on the left here uh, just off the screen where you can't see because I'm a nice person. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, so here are the ship debris. Here's a little list of the graphics that are allowed. I just use this for picking randomly elsewhere in the code. Don't worry about it. Uh, the debris, I don't know if you noticed from the gameplay uh, last video, maybe you haven't seen it, but they kind of just bounce up and down off the top of the screen and the bottom and they just it looks really silly actually like again because the game is going so fast it doesn't matter you're never going to notice but if you if you die in in this in the uh pocket dimension or folded space or whatever it's called there's a name that that uh blair or blear the uh, computer ai gives you and then the code and i need to make them the same so i don't confuse myself uh but anyway if you die while in that set, that funny bonus level you can see the they just like hit the bottom and just bounce straight up. It looks like an old school screensaver, like from Windows 95 days or something. It looks really dumb. Um, but again, you don't notice when you're just cruising through it at the at the speed you are on the normal game. So I didn't worry about it. I was thinking, oh, I could make it do a sine. You know, use sine waves and cosines, whatever you want to do. They're both nice and curvy. Um, they're basically the same depending on where you start. But anyway, yeah, sines and cosines will make you nice curves. And I thought about doing that. But then I. But I was like, wait, I can't even tell when I play. So again, why bother? There's no reason to. Um, but anyway, yeah, the speed they move at per frame, they, they go pretty slowly. But here is building all the collision rectangles, and this is the part that's kind of ugly. For, you know, for a lot of things, if there's a different sprite, I would use an entirely different class. Um, and we see that in, like, the enemies. Like, here's Swimming Sheliac versus Swimming Sheliac 2. And I believe these are the guys that explode when they die. Yeah, these are the guys that explode when they die. And there's not much different about them. They're, they're basically the same, but they use different sprites that are different sizes and need slightly different collision boxes, although I may have just left them square in the end. Yeah, so never mind that part. Um, but I could have just had them be exactly the same. 
the same class and maybe pass a little argument, you know, are you the buffed up version or not? I tend to err on the side of making a whole separate class because, uh, you know, I don't know what I'll change later. I might decide that Swimming Machine Lack 2 needs to also shoot lasers and, you know, we could litter the code with ifs and elses, but I would rather have a whole new class. You might call that littering because most of the classes are the same, and there's probably some, you know, abstraction or, or uh, refactoring I could do to clean that up, but I mostly don't worry about it. Anyway, for ship debris, I decided not to do that. I decided to do the thing that I was just saying I try not to do, which is have crazy if-elses. And so that's how these collision rectangles, and you can see, you can imagine how much of a pain in the ass it was to type all these numbers. Um, you know, I just copied line by line, but then I had to replace these numbers. So these numbers are those same collision rectangles we saw x, y, width, height, and I get them by just coming here and again looking at, you know, I select the box I want and it says, oh, that's at x30, y0, it's 58 pixels wide, 56 pixels tall. I think I can, there we go, check it out, I can make the cursor get whatever you want to call that circled. Anyway, so this is the core, and so then I look at that, I enter in that number, I click the next one, okay, that's at 88, 14, 24, 92, type in those numbers, blah, 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 work your way down, and I commented to kind of, so let me see which one that is, so that is debris, it's debris 2, so if we look at debris 2 here, I'm going to start using this little wah wah, that's what I'm going to call it, the wah wah thing, I'm going to start using that more, um, so there you go, 30, 0, 58, 56, just like we said, um, and, and again, I kind of labeled these in the code. I don't know why. The chances that I modify this stuff later, are, it's slim, but who knows. And so these are all the debris. I think when I showed off the code or the game yesterday, there were only five pieces of debris, maybe six. I've added up to nine, however many of a difference. Again, I don't remember where I was at yesterday. Um, but I added in more debris because I wanted a good variety and a variety of shapes and sizes and, and you know how tall are they versus how wide because I'm being forced to move whoops open the wrong window you're being forced to move from left to right so something kind of chunky like this you know the, the the width essentially doesn't really matter whereas something that's very tall like this that's more annoying because you have to move up you know up and down um, and I actually worry a little bit she don't say this, this might be a bug in the game, don't tell anyone, but I think you might be able to pass right through these. No, you know what, I don't think you should. Even bullets. No, I fixed that a long time ago, I'm sorry. You can try if you want, I wouldn't recommend it, I'm pretty sure you're just gonna die. Um, when it, so he, this is a common problem with tile-based games, um, 2D sprite-based in general, is if you have a bullet moving, say, 10 frames a second, it could kind of tunnel right through anything that isn't at least 10 pixels wide, and so this is 10 pixels wide. So let's say our bullet is moving 12 pixels per frame. It might start just to the left and then go 12 pixels and say, oh, I didn't collide with anything. Once I, and, and that used to be how Mysterious Space was, but once I started adding those angles and bouncing bullets in particular, I needed to know exactly where a bullet was hitting an angle so that we could make it bounce properly. And so I, I started making it so that when, a, when anything moves, it checks in increments. I think of four pixels at a time. Um, and again, because things are, like, pixels are chunky, so everything is always at least two pixels. Nothing can be thinner than two pixels. But I also know that I would never ask the player to collide with anything that was only two pixels wide anyway, so I thought we'll go in four pixel increments, and that's accurate enough. Um, I, the chances that you see, you know, bouncy bullets act a little funny there. I, and I have seen it where sometimes they bounce and then don't quite bounce back to the same place, and that's probably because of those sorts of errors where it's counting four pixels at a time when it should be doing two or whatever. But again, for most per for most intents and purposes, you do not notice. So, uh, yeah, so that's something I fixed a while ago, and that should apply to player movement as well. So I'm pretty sure you can't tunnel through these by moving super fast. Uh, but you know, feel free to try it. Again, I wouldn't recommend it. You'll probably die. So <laughs> I think that's really all I intended to show off was, was just this. So I'm glad that I rambled about um, other things as well, uh, about how some of these things are generated. I don't want to go on forever and ever and ever. Like, I'm sure there's many more things in the code uh, that I, you know, this could be another, like, two hours like that last horrible programming <laughs> video, uh, which I apologize for. That was really way too long. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to do that again. So I'm just going to stop here. Um, but if this is interesting to people, if you guys like seeing this kind of behind the scenes stuff, definitely let me know. I'm happy to, you know, sit down for 20 minutes or whatever, and, and I, I have not been timing. I'm just going to say 20 minutes off the top of my head. Um, tip of my, no, I don't know. Anyway, uh, yes, so if you like these sorts of things, please let me know, and I'll continue to make them. 
again, it's always something I'm interested in, and so I just imagine that therefore there are people interested. But that could be a terrible lie and uh, that I'm telling myself. So <laughs> let me know. Uh, but thank you for watching. And um, again, this version will be out in just a couple days, so that's pretty cool. So yes, thank you for watching. As I said, thank you for playing, and thank you for your feedback as always about you know meta things like this, and also game you know mechanics and play experiences as well. All that stuff is great to hear. Goodbye. Oops. Gosh, I tried to. I can't even. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't even, as the internet says.